In the 1950s, following the foundation of the National Health Service, inpatients with mental health problems did not have the right to leave hospital or to refuse aggressive treatment such as electroconvulsant therapy. They were all in a band stead. Oh, I was in there about a year and had um, electroconvulsive therapy, which uh, is a bit iffy as far as I'm concerned because I don't. I think it may work. It may ha help some people, but uh, I don't think it did a lot for me. I've also had ECT um, when I first became ill, and um, on subsequent visits, uh, again, I had another course each time of ECT. Um, it might have helped me a little bit, made me a little bit more outgoing, um, but it's difficult to um, uh, put anything more than that as, in, as, as, a, as an advantage. Um, I think I'm now getting a little bit poor in memory. I don't know whether that had anything to do with it. More and more patients were now let out of the long-stay wards and care in the community was underway. With help from dowry money, group homes were set up across the country. This was done by both Richmond and Barnes Mind and over the River Thames by Twickenham Mind. I joined Centre 32 at least five years ago. The reason I joined is because I was, didn't have many friends and wanted to get out. Well, I got out of it a bit of confidence. Um, I got a lot of friendship, became popular. And also I met, um, went out with a lot of my friends as well outside, which was quite good. The last 50 years saw a significant change in the attitude towards mental health. Arby Mind is proud to have helped in this process. However, there is still a lot of work to be done and we intend to continue challenging stigma and prejudice. Well, that's what the, most of us need. Safety, acceptance and a sense of belonging. <laughs>